does somebody who works in technology look like? That's the question that we ask hundreds of 14-year-old girls and boys around the world. We ask them to draw a picture of a technologist. <laughs> Most of them had glasses, all of them had dodgy clothes, this guy had hairy ears, and this guy looks like a sort of caveman. 99% of people drew men. And when we asked the girls how would they feel if they had to work with men like this, they didn't hold back. <laughs> One girl told me she would rather be a rubbish collector than work in technology. Now, whilst these are funny caricatures, there's a really serious point that lies beneath them. The image of someone who works in technology is of a pizza-guzzling nerd who cannot get a girlfriend. Technology has an image problem. And when I was at school, I was really good at maths. And if I'd had any sense, um, I would have gone on to study economics and statistics. But in my school, no one popular took those subjects. And I ended up taking modern languages at university. I'd fallen into the stereotype that boys do science and technology and girls do arts and humanities. Now that stereotype is even more visible today. In the UK this year, 20 times more girls oh, oh, they've had their heads chopped off. 20, <laughs> <laughs> not supposed to happen. Uh, 20 times more girls took A-level Spanish than A-level computer science. The number of girls taking computing in our country has gone down by 83% in the last 17 years. And when you look at the technology workforce, only 17%, one seven of the technology workforce is female. So we're still pandering to those same old stereotypes that boys do science and tech and girls do arts and humanities. And when I was a teenager, um, technology just didn't figure in my world. And now I've got a five-year-old daughter, Rocca, and I don't want her to think that any career is off limits. I want her to think that anything is possible, because it is. <coughs> so a year ago, oh, a year ago, um, I started Little Miss Geek, which is a social enterprise, and we are inspiring girls in inner-city London schools to change the world through technology. <coughs> We're demonstrating to the girls that they too can be great technologists. We do four things. We do after school tech clubs in schools and we have increased with an amazing head of ICT, David Talbot, we've increased the number of girls taking computer science GCSE by 52%. We're financially, oh, We're financially, we're financially um, supported and we're volunteers by Bank of America. We're also campaigning with the government and raising this issue at a national level. We have 40 MPs, including Theresa May and Nick Clegg, who have signed up her in Hero Pledge. Thanks to Google, next year we, we, we will be developing inspirational teaching materials for teachers. I get lots of emails each week from teachers saying, I really want to get girls into the classroom, please help me. And finally, we need to celebrate those female tech heroes. On Ada Lovelace Day, we ran assemblies across the UK and we asked all our teachers to celebrate those female technology heroes which often get forgotten from our curriculum. But most importantly, we are having an impact on young girls. And I am so proud that we have one of our very own Little Miss Geeks here to share her story. <laughs> Two years ago, after starting at St. Davidson's and Olaf Secondary School, work got really hard. 
hard. I struggle to keep up in class and would have to finish my class at home and then do my homework. After a while, I started to think I was stupid. Everyone else seemed to manage, why couldn't I? So my mum spoke to the school to see whether there was anything they could do, and they just said I was slow, so that made me feel great about myself. <laughs> the school then assessed me and found out I was dyslexic. At last, it was official, I wasn't stupid. Soon after this, my ICT teacher, Mr. Talbot, um, got our class joined into the Little Miss Geek Day. At first, we all thought it was just a way of getting out of class, but it turned out to be a lot better than we'd expected. It was interesting talking to female inspiring technologists, Claire from Dell, Olivia from Wired, and we even met Francesca, who designed Nicole Scherzinger's Twitter dress, and she even brought it into school. We programmed high-tech glasses to make cool, flashing patterns. We worked with a clothes designer to program and make high-tech t-shirts. I suddenly realised I was having a great time. Technology had become cool and not just something geeky boys were into. I was hooked. <laughs> and made it into something much, much bigger. How do we get girls like Zia to realise that they too can change the world through technology? We want to ensure that the next Mark Zuckerberg, the next Bill Gates, the next Eric Schmidt is female. We want the next person to change the world through technology to be a woman. demonstrate to girls that technology is about creativity, collaboration, and communication. It's not about being a lonely nerd in a darkened room. The second thing we really need to do is create an environment where girls can experiment. That means giving girls the freedom to fail safely. Technologists learn by making mistakes. And so many of our girls come to our after-school tech clubs and think that they're going to make mistakes. And finally, we need to instill a sense of self-belief in our girls. There's nothing mystical about coding. We, we're giving girls the confidence to realize that coding is just another language, a language in which we can all be fluent. Here's how Zia is changing the world. Six months later, my ICT teacher entered our class into the Apps for Good competition. My friend Jordan and I had to come up with an idea, and from this, Daddy <coughs> Recyclers was born. Not many people are into recycling. We do it at home, but when we're out, we just throw things away anywhere. Our app scans products and knows whether the packaging can be recycled. It even tells you where the nearest recycling bin is. We decided to make it into a social game. Scan the product, get points or vouchers, or simply just feel good. Well, we didn't win the competition, but one of the contestants from The Apprentice approached us and agreed to mentor us through the process and help fund development. It's tough keeping up with schoolwork, working on the app, and doing all the things that you have to do when you're 14. <laughs> but to all the girls who think they're stupid and can't achieve anything, we are going to make it happen. I even won a laptop at a little Miss Geek day, but better than that, I started to believe I could do something great. I used to think technology was just fixing computers and saying things like, have you tried turning it off and on again, like on the IT ground? But I have discovered another side to it. You can make technology your own. So to all the girls who think technology is just for boys in their bedrooms who can't get girlfriends, we are the new generation. And we are going to make it happen. We can use technology as a, t as a tool to do whatever we want. I am coding my way into the future. And I want thousands of other girls
girls to join me. I've realized being a geek is cool.